In this video, I want to talk about the lac operon cap site and catabolite repression. So before we can discuss this topic, we have to think about cyclic AMP and its importance in this system. So cyclic AMP is a signal of hunger for the prokaryote. So this signal of hunger, cyclic AMP, has to be related to the amount of glucose around. So if, a pro if you're hungry, does that mean that you have glucose or that you need glucose? So if you're hungry, you probably, you want to eat, right? You want glucose. So that means if you're hungry, you have low glucose. So cyclic AMP, if there's a bunch of it, if there's a bunch of the hunger signal, that means you have little glucose around. And I'm saying you just to make things a little bit simpler and easier to relate to, but this is, keep in mind this is for prokaryotes. Now if you have a low cyclic AMP, a low amount of the hunger signal, that probably means you already have glucose available, or the prokaryote has glucose available. Now, why is cyclic AMP important? If cyclic AMP is present, that means that there's low glucose levels, okay? If cyclic AMP is present, it will bind CAP. Now, CAP is the protein that binds cyclic AMP. So, it's a cyclic AMP binding protein. So, if C cyclic AMP is around, it will bind the cyclic AMP binding protein and form the cyclic AMP cap complex. Okay, I'm going to call it the camp cap complex. What does this complex do? Well, what it does is it binds the cap site on the lac operon. And when it does that, it activates transcription of the structural genes of the lac operon. Okay, so let's see how this would work. Now we have to consider the availability of glucose and lactose when we think about this. So there are four different scenarios. The first one, with when there is glucose and no lactose. The second, when there's neither. And the third, when there's both. And the last, when there's only lactose. So what's going on here? What we're going to do is think about the sugar presence being related to the proteins bound, bound to the operon and whether or not transcription of the structural genes would occur. So notice I've drawn glucose here and I've boxed it in orange. And the reason and why is because this portion here, this cyclic AMP and cap protein complex uh, is also boxed in orange because the availability of glucose tells you about whether this protein will be available and bound to the operon. And then the lactose and the repressor are both circled in blue because they're related and knowing about the presence of lactose will tell you about whether or not the, the repressor protein is bound. So let's think about this first scenario. The prokaryote has glucose available but no lactose. So if glucose is available, what does that tell you about cyclic AMP levels? Well, if there's lots of glucose, that means you have low cyclic AMP. So I'll write that here, low cyclic AMP. If there's low cyclic AMP, what does that mean about this protein? Will it be bound to the cap site? Well, no, right? Because if there's no cyclic AMP, that complex won't form. This complex will not form if there's no cyclic AMP around. So it will not bind the cap site. What about lactose availability? If there's no lactose, what does that mean about the repressor protein? Is it going to be bound or not? Well, lactose induces the repressor protein to fall off. But if there's no lactose, that means the repressor protein will be bound. So that's drawn here. The repressor protein is bound to the operator, but there's no cyclic AMP cap complex bound to the cap site. Notice that, that because the repressor is here, transcription will not occur. RNA polymerase here bound to the promoter is blocked. So could or would transcription occur? No. And does that make sense? Let's think about that for a second. If, if the prokaryote has glucose available to it, why would it need to make the enzymes that break down lactose? It wouldn't need to, right? On top of that, on top of that, the, there's no lactose around anyway. So even if there was lactose, there you, um, wouldn't need to break it down because there's glucose around. So the first thing is that because this this protein, this complex here, is not bound there, the activation is not the activation of transcription is not going to happen. So there's no activator bound. Okay. And the second thing is of course that there's a repressor bound. So there's no activator bound. Oops. There's no activator bound and the repressor is bound. So transcription would definitely not occur. What about the second scenario in which there's no glucose and no lactose? 
Well, if there's no glucose, that means that you're hungry, right? Or that the prokaryote is hungry. So that means high cyclic AMP. High cyclic AMP levels. So will the cyclic AMP cap complex form? Yes. It will form and it will bind. And that's why it's drawn here bound. Now, there's no lactose around. So no lactose, no inducer. That means that the repressor protein is going to be bound. So the repressor protein is bound here because in, there's no lactose available to induce it to fall off. So will transcription occur here? No. Again, it's blocked by that repressor. So although, although it is activated here, the, although the activator is present, it is activated, the repressor is bound. So the repressor blocks the RNA polymerase. So in this case, you can imagine that's a really, really bad scenario for the prokaryote because there's no glucose for, available for energy and there's no lactose available for energy. They have no, nothing to break down for energy. So they're desperate for energy in this point, which is why they activate this in hopes that maybe if there's lactose around, they can break it down for energy. But even then, there's no lactose. So that repressor is there. What about this third scenario? The third scenario here is when we have, when the prokaryote has glucose and lactose both available. So if there's glucose around, that means that what about the cyclic AMP levels? It means the cyclic AMP levels are low. So we have low cyclic AMP levels. That means that there's no hunger signal. So no hunger signal means, and, and no cyclic AMP, means this complex will not form and it won't bind to the cap site. What about the repressor protein? Will it be bound? Well, there's lactose available, so it induces that repressor to, to fall off. So the repressor will not be bound. So notice here the, the cyclic AMP cap site is not, or camp complex is not bound to the cap site, and the repressor is not bound to the operator. So could transcription occur here? The answer is it could, but it probably won't. Now, Now that's a little funny answer, right? Why would that be the case? Well, the first thing is that there's no repressor, right? So, um, so it can go, the RNA polymerase can go, but it's not activated here. The cyclic AMP cap complex is not here. So I will put here that it's activated because that, um, excuse me, it's not activated, sorry. That's my mistake. It is not activated even though there's no repressor bound. Now, what is, what's going on here? Why does this make sense, or what, what, what's going on at all? Well, there is lactose around, right? So it could go ahead and transcribe these genes and break lactose down, but glucose is around, right? So glucose just goes through glycolysis and then boom, done. The, the cell or the, the prokaryote has energy. So there's no need to tap on lactose in this case. So that's the idea there. There's no need to tap on lactose for energy. Because glucose available. Because glucose is available. What about this last case? The last case is when there's no glucose and there is lactose. So no glucose means that the hunger signal will be around. There's high, um, high cyclic AMP. High cyclic AMP. So this complex will form. And it will be bound. There it is. And the, their presence of lactose is, yes, there is lactose. So it will induce the repressor to fall off. So there's no repressor there. So now the RNA polymerase is bound and activated. So in this case, transcription can occur. So in this case, the answer is yes. Transcription will occur because the, the two scenarios, one is that it's activated and there's no repressor. So it's active and not blocked. And that makes sense, right? This is the case in which there's no glucose around for energy but there's lactose. So because there's lactose and there's no glucose, 
then it makes sense then that you would go ahead or the prokaryote would go ahead and transcribe these genes that could break down lactose for energy because it has no other choice. There's no, there's no glucose available. I hope that video was helpful in understanding this idea. One last thing, I am a tutor. If you live in Southern California, feel free to contact me via email at mufuniversity at gmail.com. See the description below for more details. Thanks for watching.